Ba, 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 ba. Um, okay, so this is, uh, should be a series uh, about my research. I'm in a three to four year research project at the moment looking at uh, the impact of improv comedy uh, with autistic adults. Um, so uh, I'm going to be putting up videos every now and again um, about whatever I'm looking into, basically. So here goes. <sighs> Okay, so um, this one is about Keith Sawyer. Keith Sawyer. Um, and why, why talk about Keith Sawyer? Essentially, uh, he started uh, research on inflation in the 18s. However, let's make that correct. Because he used improvisers in his research. He's, he's uh, studied many areas uh, and uh, was really great when I found uh, out about Sawyer was that in the 80s he had videotapes, multiple videotapes, many videotapes of improvisers and what he did is he watched them all and he did discourse analysis uh, and if you know anything about discourse analysis that is a long procedure that would take a lot of patience so well done to him um, uh, so it's, it's about uh, transcribing everything uh, that goes on and it's about the words and how things are said and, and done um, I'm not an expert on discourse analysis by all means uh, it scares me um, and I probably wouldn't necessarily look to do it myself um, uh, um, so the history of, of uh, Sawyer he he uh, he did his PhD under another great person uh, Mihai Chekmahai last name Chekmahai uh, and that is the guy who did a lot of work around flow uh, and I'll be doing another video and probably blogs about flow because that's actually fascinating um, uh, so uh, Sawyer started out uh, looking at creativity um, and uh, the history of, of creativity is in the 15s uh, basically the American army were like IQ tests are not working for us to be able to hire the appropriate people to fly airplanes uh, so they needed a new test. Uh, and what came out of that is uh, this psychologist who uh, became the director of um, APA, um, American Psychology Association. Um, yeah, uh, I can't remember exactly, 52, 54? Um, in any case, he, he made a speech and it was all about creativity. And then a new craze uh, came about, about looking into uh, into this topic. Uh, anyway, Sawyer, Sawyer uh, loved that and a lot of things came out of that. Um, uh, and what is the definition of creativity? Well, that's uh, it depends what decade you're looking into. Uh, the, at the start there, um, with uh, Guildford in the 50s, um, it was... Uh, about uh, individualistic approach which was um, about uh, uh, the new combination of ideas uh, but then uh, well, later on people were like it's not that doesn't quite fit doesn't quite work so they looked at the social cultural which was a new it was the uh, uh, being appropriate uh, and it's about the social validation that uh, the the creative um, product would be or is how you wish to term it um uh, so that's that's essentially uh, the, a little bit of history of that. Um, a lot of what what has happened with creativity uh, research is uh, divergent thinking. Nowadays we don't quite like that. Although if you look at a recent publication uh, that does use improvisation, um, it uses uh, a DT test. Back in the day, the most famous one was the Torrance termites uh, sort of test, which is Torrance test. Um, that was used, um, there were two places, one person uh, also tried to replicate it. Um, one of those ones, not sure if it's original or not, was New York. Um, uh, and that's just, that's looking at, um, well, you know, the people's thought processes being uh, able to go different areas. For example, in improv, that would be, I'm shaking this camera all about. Uh, that would be uh, like a, a, the the chair game, or you know, using the chair in different ways. However, the weakness in this test uh, is the fact that it asks, or one of the uh, domains is asking you to uh, extrapolate, uh, add more detail to it. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't even say improvisers would necessarily necessarily do that. Um, but yeah, test out yourself. See, 
Um, uh, obviously, you can't test yourself now, now that you've heard that, because you'll do it on purpose. Um, I'm moving this camera right about the room behind me. Let's frame you a little bit there. That's where I want you, with the weird picture behind me. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, back back to back to Sawyer. Uh, so Sawyer um, found that uh, by looking at improvisers, there are um, problem finding and problem solving, and improvisers would be more problem finding, uh, which uh, by the term itself means that instead of looking for the the problem uh, uh, as you go through whatever you're going through the process you find the problem instead. Um, uh, that's, uh, and this also links to something else that he found, which is uh, by being in process, things emerge. So uh, the theory of emergence um, is is a big thing as well. And other terms that uh, Sawyer comes up with is uh, co-creation and retrospective meaning making, these sorts of things, which are, will make a lot of sense when you actually sit down and think, well, what are we doing here? Things will emerge. We are co-creating, uh, and and we are we are putting meanings to the two things after they've happened, uh, not beforehand. So it, it, it all makes it, it's all logical, but you know these things come out of uh, research and it comes out of actually thinking about them. Um, yeah. So other things that the Soyuz looked into is uh, teaching. So he promotes um, an improvisational teacher. Uh, which is wonderful. Um, this sort of uh, research has started in the 80s as well. Um, uh, I'm not, it wasn't just Sawyer who was looking at this. If you look at uh, government uh, policies and the practices in, in education nowadays, it actually does have a lot of this this sort of uh, um, uh, push uh, for it, although none of it states improv, obviously. Um, in any case, uh, Sawyer... I uh, was we speaking about the three paradoxes, or uh, yeah, three paradoxes: the learning paradox, the teaching paradox, and the curriculum paradox. So the learning paradox uh, is is about um, uh, scaffolding uh, pupils and students' learning. So uh, instead of uh, um, uh, not pushing forward uh, what needs to be learned, uh, it's it's not helping out that that process. Um, uh, you you want to uh, put things in place. In order for the student to actually achieve, um, teaching paradox is is about knowing your topic and knowing your kids. It's about being responsive. It's about being opt opportunistic in the learning. Um, and the curriculum paradox is 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 links to the other two, I guess, because it's, it's it, they have to work together. Uh, it's it's about having that flexible content. Um, uh, so again, it's it's it is that opportunistic element of, of teaching and learning. It's a, you need to be able to adapt to the situation, to the moment, uh, and you can't just have a rigid curricula. Um, yeah, so it's about meeting the students in the room with what needs to happen then. Um, uh, many years ago, there was a, an article about this teacher in Mexico, and uh, there was little resources that uh, he had available to him for his pupils, uh, but he managed to get uh, like one computer and uh, allowed the the pupils to learn what they wanted to learn. So they use this resource and they learn whatever they want. And actually, uh, that if you think about motivation, that actually is much more sensible. So in in a similar way, these these uh, these um, thoughts about being an improvisational teacher. Uh, they, they work because you do have you're putting things in place that help help the pupils by having the the resources that that meet their their need and motivation uh and it's, it, oh, well we could go for all of them but it's, yeah i'm sure you can understand the point um uh, uh sawyer also looked into the brain uh what happens in the brain when we improvise um and this is in this is in in a uh, in one of his books um uh, so uh so um actually what he talks about is uh, other research so the most famous research is uh Lim and Braun 2008 which is uh, comes out with similar results as Berkowitz and Ansari in 2008 uh, and what they both find uh, in different ways uh Lim and Braun uses a plastic piano in an fMRI scan uh and, and uh so do Berkowitz I think 
Um, however, the the task is different uh, for for them. Um, and what they both what they both find is that there's a few things going on in the brain, but one of the main points is that the brain has an inhibition on the judgment part of the brain. Um, and we could go into brain scans and, and the different areas of the brain, but we won't today. What I will point out is that the uh, scans themselves are are fascinating because what it's really looking into uh, isn't what's sparking up because you have to have a baseline brain scan uh, and then you have to subtract your your scan of during the test uh, and 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 that's how you find out what's what's actually being lit up because the brain is always always lit up no matter what you're doing something is going on uh, so, so that has to happen another no, two other points on this is that uh, there's only ever three percent increase or decrease yeah, uh, increase yeah, I'm not an expert on brain scans necessarily, it's just fascinating. Uh, but there's only ever a 3% increase in, in uh, the brain. And also, it takes 14 seconds uh, for for a section of the brain to go back to baseline. So it's actually really quite difficult to, to use use these things, uh, these scans. Methodology. Um, uh, and lastly, um, Sawyer looks... Uh, well, in, in conclusion, really, because the last point is is about uh, group genius, which is um, title of a book that uh, Sawyer has, um, and uh, 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 what's in this is really uses everything that I've spoken about. Um, but one point that it looks at is uh, use of these uh, these elements in organization organizational cultures. Um, so if we have uh, a, uh, a team that is uh, working together, we ha looking for that group genius. Then uh, we have to uh, be equal, have that equality going on. Uh, we have to blend egos, and we have to uh, work through the, the the flow. Use this flow, which is all about that problem problem finding model. Um, so all all this comes together when we look at uh, working as a team, and um, really uh, being able to get to wherever we want to get to. And this is logical if you think about what organisations really want and what they need. They they want to have the next best product to sell. So innovation is is key. Uh, and how do you get there? You know, you need to have um, uh, you need to have an atmosphere, an environment that that's conducive to ideation and teamwork and communication. Uh, so all these things um, it makes sense. So uh, uh, these. Uh, this is why I think uh, a video about Sawyer is um, good to do. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching that one. If you want to subscribe, that's at the top. If you want to see uh, more of my touring stuff, that's the uh, here. And uh, Space Monkeys, I guess we have there. So uh, keep watching. Subscribe. Thank you.